just a few years ago, back in 2013, I lived in New York City at the time. I was a sophomore going to NYU, and at the time I chose New York because I was really fascinated with all the people that came to that city, people from all over the place. And I was really fascinated with, with people and why they chose to do what they chose to do and, and why they ended up where they ended up. And one of the things that I loved doing in New York was sitting on the subway and watching the other subway cars go by and watching all the people who were just going around the city. The questions that came into my mind were questions like, who are all of these people? Where are these people going? And why are they going there? One day, I had just finished a final. I was getting ready to go visit a friend um, who lived up on the Upper East Side. And I got on the subway at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. On the subway, it was packed with people. Got off the subway, doing my usual routine, and started to head uptown, walking on the streets, walking by coffee shops. And I realized that the streets were packed too, and, and so were the coffee shops. People were out and about. And the question that kept coming into my brain is, what are all of these people doing? It's 2 o'clock in the middle of a work week. Why are these people not in an office working somewhere? It's like, don't you know that New York City is an expensive city to live in? What are you doing? <laughs> and I started thinking about it and started texting some of my friends, kind of joking, being like, do people work anymore? Is it true? Is our generation lazy? What are these people doing out and about? And some of my friends texted me back, and they said, no, actually, this is, this is normal. Uh, once you graduate from college, you'll realize that people are starting to work flexible schedules. And this is something that employers actually give to people as a retention tool. And that notion was really interesting to me because as a sophomore, I was thinking about, you know, what is my career going to look like and what am I going to do next? And the question that I had at the time, too, which was, you know, what happens if I want to have a family? How am I going to be able to work and raise kids? So I said, flexibility totally makes sense. Being able to pick where I want to work and when I want to work, that's something that I wanted for myself, too. And as I started thinking about this more, I started talking to my parents and about, about kind of their career trajectory and started looking a little bit farther back from that. I had a conversation with my grandma, and she told me, she was like, yeah, when I immigrated to the United States from Portugal, um, I worked in a factory. And I worked in that factory for 40 years to put your dad through college. And that was my job. That was my employer. Just that one employer for pretty much her entire life. Then I talked to my dad, and my dad said, you know, we did things a little bit differently. I worked a, a few jobs. My dad had three jobs in, in my lifetime and still working. He might have one more job before he retires. But I was really interested in that speeding up, that my dad had worked for about three or four times the employers that my grandma had worked. And then I started looking at my peers, my friends that had graduated from college, and I started looking at their careers. <laughs> And it looked very different. A lot of my friends were graduating from college. They were working for an employer for a year, maybe two years, then going on to the next thing. Some of them were working for an employer and trying to do their own startup, or working for someone and driving for Uber. And their careers were a hybrid, working multiple jobs for multiple employers all at one time. And that was really, really fascinating to me. The thing that I asked myself about that was, you know, why is this happening? Why is it that in my grandma's lifetime, people worked for one employer, and, and now people are working for five employers at once, and what does this mean for me? And I started realizing that one thing is really catalyzing this, and that's the speed at which technology has been created. With every new technology, it's continuing to connect us globally to the rest of the world and connect us at all times. When my grandma was working, there was no phone in her pocket. 
She wasn't getting texted about something at work when she was back at home. And today, work seems to follow us around. Just kind of looking at a macro level of the evolution of work and and where this all came from, if you think back to pre-1800s and early 1800s, we were really in an agriculture age. What was expected of us was to work outside and work on the land, and that was the primary form of work for most people. After that, we shifted again. We shifted into the industrial age where we saw Henry Ford and factories being built and people moved from outside into the factory and that became the new accepted norm. Moving even further into my parents' generation, the American dream, getting that corner office, that was what was expected of people. And again today, looking at our generation, I feel that we're again in a transitionary period. We're moving from that office age into more of the age of creativity, where people are working for themselves, being entrepreneurial, thinking outside of the box, coming up with new ways of doing things. And one of those new ways of doing things is working in a flexible manner. And as someone who was getting ready to graduate from from college, one of the questions that I had was, you know, how does this actually affect all of us? Is this good for us? Is this change something that we should embrace? And I started looking into the numbers, and I realized that of employers that offer flexibility to their workforce, 77% of that workforce reported having increased job satisfaction, meaning when they woke up in the morning, that was a place that they wanted to go to work, or that was a company that they wanted to work for out of that coffee shop. 66% of that workforce said that they were just happier in general. My personal belief is that if people are happier, they typically tend to be nicer people, and that is what makes the world go round. So I was really excited about that. And 59% of people felt that their stress levels decreased. Having that flexibility, that optionality to be able to choose what hours they were going to work, be able to say, hey, I'm going to leave work now and go pick up my kid from soccer practice or whatever it may be. Looking at all these stats, I started going around to some of my other entrepreneurial friends who had started businesses saying, you should really offer flexibility to your entire workforce. You should really allow people to choose when and where they want to work. Started sharing some of these stats, but I think some of the other statistics that made me really interested and a big proponent of flexibility were statistics that had to do with the business itself. I went to some of my friends and I said, if it's not enough for you that your employees are going to be happier, they're going to be less stressed by you giving them that flexibility, then look at your own bottom line. 63% of employers said that they had less unscheduled time where employees were actually leaving the office. And employees themselves felt more productivity when they had that optionality to pick up and go to a coffee shop one day or pick up and work from home one day. Looking at that bottom line for companies, Flexibility matters. As I started thinking about this more, I realized, yes, we are in fact in a shift. And every transitionary period is hard. We all like to say that we like change, but in reality, change is something that that takes time and is something that has growing pains along with it. Moving from the agricultural age into the industrial age, there was a period and a time of shift where people said, is this what's really right? Why is this happening? There's skills mismatch and things happening that make it a tough transitionary period. And we're very much going through that same thing now with technology, changing from the information age into that creativity age. There are these changes where people want to work different. They want to have optionality. 
So when I look forward to the, the companies that I build in the future and the, the lifestyles that my friends have, I'm really excited about this shift. This shift from working in four walls in an office or being told when we have to work at that retail job, at that restaurant job, into an era where we, as human beings, get to be human and experience life on our own terms. Thank you.